What? <clears throat> Forgive me, coffee and mucus sits in my throat. Excuse me. Why, hello. And welcome back to another faux podcast episode of The Queen's Tales. Faux podcast. Again, for those of you who are in on the joke, you know that this is actually a fake podcast. Um, kind of poke a fun how podcasts have become so prominent, I guess, on YouTube, <laughs> other places, whatever. But really, it's just a chance for me to talk about my life behind the scenes of the brand on social media of what you get to see. I'm here to talk about what you don't get to see. And they're never as long as most podcasts. I don't got time. I don't do hours or two hours or three. Mm-mm. It might only be 20 minutes. Sometimes I may only be 10, but it's because it's a full podcast, okay? And usually the only guest I have on here is myself, my alter ego, the brave behind the operation, Peyton James Crouch Jr. Give him a hand. Why, thank you, thank you. You know, it's a pleasure to have you on this this pod, podcast every week. <laughs> Let us know another life story. Absolutely. But before Peyton James Cross Jr. does that, I want to need all of you, yes, you, to hit the like button at least. Share with your friends, comment. If you find value in this, but I want to keep reminding you throughout this episode because I see people come to my videos now that it's starting to share the videos with people that's algorithm robot after after putting out videos for years, but nobody's commenting, nobody's hitting the like button. Y'all just look, y'all just looky lose. Listen, I know. I'm gonna look at myself, okay? I watch videos and then let them autoplay or I'll, I'll go back and select or whatever and just kind of let them play as I multitask, but I'm gonna need you to start whatever you're doing and, and not be looky lose. And because this is free, y'all don't have to pay for this YouTube. I'll let y'all pay for premium, but then y'all just foolish in my opinion. Okay? Don't let YouTube steal your money. Anyway. The way it's stealing our money. Woo! Did I say that? I did. Anyway. Hit the like button at least. So this can get shared to more people. Because it's telling this robot that you like what you see. And if you comment, oh, they're commenting whether it's negative or positive. Even if it's a dislike button, it's still giving <laughs> feedback. I right, share people. But really, hit the like button. We don't care about no dislike button. Uh huh. And leave a comment. The goal for this video was 20 likes and three comments. 20 likes, three comments. It's not hard, folks. Not hard. Okay? Thank you for your support in advance. Now let's get back to the episode. Peyton James Cross Jr., take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, this is a story again about me working on the strip here in, in Las Vegas at a new hotel named Fountain Fountain Blue. I always want to call it Fountain Blue, but it's not that's not how you say it. Cause I got that E at the end. So I thought it was accented like Raven Simone. <laughs> but anyway that's my girl. Shout out to Raven Simone. Hey. Anyway. So it's a nice sunny day. 
a nice sunny summer day. In the winter that we are currently in, season of Las Vegas. And fun fact, I think I said this on another episode, but just in case I did not say this, is that the strip is actually not really located in Las Vegas, the city. The strip is actually located in a city called Paradise. But everybody just refers to it as Vegas. But the, it's actually all of the strip is, is sits in a separate city called Paradise within Las Vegas Metropolitan. Kind of like Los Angeles. It gets confusing, so I'm not going to talk about it to you guys any, any longer. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's all still Vegas. But that was just a fun fact for you. Now... I get myself on the bus to go down to work out because I work at the gym inside of Fountain Blue. That's what I was hired to do. As a perk, we, as the people working there, get to use the gym on our days off before or after our shifts. So I went down there to work out. I get off the bus. We had to go all the way to the back of the building where it's dangerous to walk into because there's really no walkway at 83 Resorts for people to walk up on until you get to the back. For somebody's safety walking to walk up into the employee entrance. So you have like a 90... 5% chance of literally getting hit if you're not watching your own back from other employees. And I want to say this if you haven't heard me before, you're new is that co workers are not your friends. Let me say that again. The workplace is a war zone. And co-workers are not your friends for many reasons. People think they're burning you or they're trying to get to a position and they see you as a direct threat. They think you're ugly. They don't like your voice, but they either have to smile in your face or not. And find a way to get along so they can get their paycheck or get to a corporate ladder they're trying to climb. You might find a cool person or two, but I'm just here to tell you now. Know the politics and the game of politics at the workplace. And just just take take this take this in. <laughs> Co-workers are not your friends. They're your acquaintances, but they're not your friends. You really shouldn't be hanging out with co-workers at the work. You really shouldn't. Because you can get on a team that seems really cool and it's about togetherness and all this stuff they try to push. And it can seem like, wow, this is some great people. <clears throat> it's a trap. Don't fall for it. When you go to work, you got to turn on your acting bag. Action. And you're an actor. Until you clock out and leave the building and the premises. Safely get back to your home and your car or whatever. You can turn the acting hat off because if you bring everything to a job. Including 
all of your personality and then you're telling people all your business because you feel like you can trust them because they're quote unquote nice you're setting yourself up for failure So watch your own back and just realize the workplace is not a place to commune. The workplace is not a place to make friends like that at your own risk. It's definitely not a place for family making and some of these companies will try to push and lie to you that we're all a family you're not and once somebody stabbed you in the back you'll never be the same again you know look at the workplace the same again now, working at a resort is not for the faint of heart. They take Las Vegas as some glitzy, glamour, glamorous place. Gambling and all that, and all the fancy buildings, the entertainment. Well, really, it's a facade. It's definitely not glitzy, glitzy and glamorous for the workers that work there. If anything, it's more of a chaotic nightmare in my personal opinion of working at two resorts so far since moving to Vegas. Three, actually. At this particular new hotel, they have like so much security everywhere, everywhere. It's not just where the guests are on the floor. It's in the back of the house where the employees are. They're everywhere, which tells you that these companies don't care for you. They'll lie to you, say you're a member. They even, this company will even try to say, told us to treat each other with kindness. Hello, how are you, blah, blah, blah. But that's not the way things actually are. The honeymoon has ended and the ugly truth has come out. The honeymoon has ended and the ugly truth has come out. When I'm walking in to this job, this, this monstrosity, I don't feel welcomed. I don't feel safe. I don't feel warm and cozy. Cause what you're greeted with, when you even walk up into there towards the member entrance, where you have to enter, you can't go into the front of the building Everybody has to enter to the, who's a employee through the back through the back way. And instantly you see at least two to three police cars parked right there. Plus the security. And you walk in, and there's nothing but security guards like all over the place. in the back, not in the front, in the back, with us as the employees. And I just get this unwelcome feeling like none of us are supposed to be here. The way this is structured does not feel comfortable, does not feel welcoming, does not, does not tell me that you value me 
as an employee working for your company, making you money eight hours a freaking day. So I go up in there yesterday to use the gym. They want you to come to the back way still and have your badge out. If you don't have your badge out, one of these, those mouthy security guards will have the nerve to scream at you rudely. Where's your badge? Where's your badge? And honey, I don't let nobody just come out their mouth at me. I will give you attitude. I will talk back. You're not my boss. I don't care how many cameras. Cameras are everywhere. Not just in the front, but it's in the back of the house too. It's everywhere in the garage. Cameras are everywhere. Surveillance security is overdone. They can zoom in on your face and anything they want to to see what you're doing, who you are. You're literally walking into a big brother situation at the job that you work and get paid for. You're not treated like, and they're allowing your face to talk about, it's all about togetherness. It's all about working with one another. It's all about family. Are you, are you insane? What the f goes on? I mean, does he think, I mean, do that, who, whoever's in charge, I know who's in charge, but I'm going to talk about him. Does these people think that we're, we're stupid, that our bodies don't pick up on something's wrong here? My body definitely picks up on it all the time. And so I usually walk up into the place. My badge is out, chest up, either walking with a real strong walk or switching my hips. Like, bitch, the body language is very strong because the body language speaks louder than the words coming out your mouth to each other. I don't give a care. I'm here at this point. I'm just here to get in the building, get to my place. Do not talk to me. Do not try to stop me because you're getting a reason to stop me. Get to my mother freaking section to make my money with people I don't even necessarily trust because they've already backstabbed me. And the management has come to me to tell me about it. So trust nobody, nobody at your job, nobody. I know you want to be friends and be friendly, blah, 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 but you cannot get close to these people at your job. It's not a place designed for that type of relationship building. It's a difficult relationship that you have to have and a mindset that you have to go into when you enter the workplace, especially on a place like the Strip at these resorts. That you have to have. You literally have to have a warrior's mentality and know how these workplaces function. That's why I always feel sorry for the dummy employees. I'm just like, I feel so sorry for y'all. But then again, I don't care. Because I reached a point where I walk up in these places to do one thing, get the, get my money, 
so that I could put it into the stuff that I really care about. Do it my head, over my head and food in my mouth. I don't, I'm over actually working for other people. I'm over the corporate bullshit. I'm over the slavery wage. I'm over it. But you have to participate in the game where you are. You can't be foolish and just not sh go to work unless you're making money some other kind of way already. You basically have to swallow your pride, bring out your humility to go to these jobs that you know is not made for somebody like you with a warrior spirit and a vision that you yourself are trying to fund by yourself with these little coins and pennies they're throwing at you daily, hourly. And so I walk up in the place, flash my badge, you know, change my, all my clothes. I had my workout clothes under it. Go through the hallway, go upstairs, walking, more security, whatever. I turn into the gym. Go in here, get my workout on. And then after I've done my workout, I walk back out. Change back into my other clothes. As I'm walking down the hallway, I go down to, because we get a free, we get an hour lunch and a free meal. That's literally like the only real good thing about working at these resorts. But the um the cons outweigh the pros. Okay, the cons outweigh the pros. So we get a free meal, a sort of cafeteria downstairs. And depending on what restaurant, I mean, I should say what resort you, you end up working at, depending on how good the, good the um, cafeteria food is going to be, because it's, it's not cafeteria food like school lunch. They're really cooking. They're really cooking some real stuff, but some people, some base places are just better than others. So. I go, I get it to go, I get my free meal. I walk back upstairs, have a little target bag with the, um, with the meal on it. And I walk out the door. I'm walking towards the door. I see the security guard lady sitting by the front door. I say, hey, you know, real friendly. And I was like, I know you guys got to check bags now, so. You know, here it is. And she's like, back up. So I back up. But I start walking towards the door because I was like, and I had my little coffee cup. And I, I my, poked my chest out. My coffee cup in the air, my head, my head in the air. My head in the air like I was bougie, bitch. And I walked towards the door. And she's like, hold up, wait a minute. She said, come back here, come back. So I turn around slowly, I come back with the bag. I went to back up for her. I'm like, here you go. She was like, you had your hand too, a little too close to me. I was scared. Bitch, you're the security guard. What you scared for? 
if you are a woman and you are threatened by men, you shouldn't be a security guard. And I'm a gay man. You can clearly see that. Not that I won't wrong you or rock you because I got all that going on too. But I wasn't even able to give you that energy. I was polite, nice. And I, instead of just walking past you, knowing that you guys are supposed to check bags, I didn't. I stopped and I literally said, I know you guys got to check bags. Here it is. I could have just walked past you acting like you were nothing. But I didn't do that. I was respectful. Now, I don't know what you were thinking in your little brain, honey, but you're not ready for prime time. Just like that hotel, Fountain Blue, it's not ready for prime time either. And I think I talked about that on another podcast episode. So you can go look back through all the podcasts to find it. Okay. Anyway, and you got these other employees around from all these other departments that you don't even visit because you're really trying to get there. You're trying to get out. You're trying to get your money. Get out of that place. It's not a fun. It's not a great place to be in. These resorts for employees. Anyway, um. So I leave and I leave with my chest up, my hips switching, my coffee cup in the air, my head up. Like, bitch, do not try me. And that's how I walk out the door and walk down the way. So again, I don't care. Listen, they were in there cutting people out, firing them up already within the first month. Security escorting them out. I don't care if people are talking about me. I don't care about my reputation at these resorts because I know who I am and I'm not going to let you disrespect me. I can work anywhere I want to. Get a job like that within days. I don't need this. Y'all must not know anything about me. Y'all don't. And that's how I, that's where I want to keep it. Professional. All my secrets. I keep it right here. Between me and my brain. How I maneuver, how I move. I keep it right here because nobody is really to be trusted. You gotta use your discernment and the older you get, the stronger that becomes. And so the more I come back to the, the <clears throat> to work at the hotel, I just become more hardened and I find myself playing a game of cat and mouse. And about six personalities. As I'm walking through the hallways, I either have a bitch back up body language or I have a not interested body language. Just trying to get from A to B, B to C, you know, all that. People who manage to say hi to me, I switch right up. I lighten up and I go, hey, how are you? Thank you. I turn right into that. And then I go back into my defense mode. After the, the exchange has been done. 
because that's the kind of place you're actually working in. You're not working in the culture that they promised it was supposed to be because the players that you, these people have selected, they're not playing that game. So I got to protect me because ain't nobody else going to in the end. I'm going to go back down there today again to exercise. Again. Get my freaking meal. Again. Walk out. Again. And that's the end of my story. Thank you. Wow. Let's give Peyton James Cross Jr. another hand. If you like what you heard today, please, please, please hit the like button. Share with your friends, baby. Comment. Don't just sit there and I look at this video and my analytics and I see there's been no likes at all, not even a dislike or a comment. And there's like 10 of you watching. No, 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 no. I need you to stop what you're doing and at least hit the like button. The goal for this video, once again, is 20 likes, three comments. That's 20 likes, three comments. We can do it. By the way, while you're here, if you're into electronic dance music, if you're into electronic dance music, if you're into electronic dance music, electronic dance music Please go ahead and follow my social medias. But really, as I tell all my faithful fans, social media is dead. And it's no longer in the favor of the creator, the musician, the artist, the creative one. They took the gun, pointed at us, and they shot us in the face. They called themselves kings, masters, and sultans. And called us collateral and peons, basically. Without actually saying the words. So in that instance, guess who's really king now for us? That is email. Email is king, queen, and sultan for us. Because it's a voice for us to actually communicate with our supporters followers, whatever, and for them to communicate back with us, seeing every piece of mail, content, right there through email. So if you want to support and you are an electronic dance music fan, get on the email list. And as a gift from me to you, you get three free unreleased EDM bangers from me. My music currently right now is only heard through my email list. You won't find them on any streaming platforms. You'll find a song or two on SoundCloud, but it's not. It's like an old whatever. But you're not going to find really much music anywhere. And that's on purpose. Because it's war with the streaming platforms. It's war with social media. So get on the email list by going to Peyton30.com. Once you're there, there'll be a button to hit. It'll take you to a landing page. Put your email in. Your phone number. You don't have to put your phone number in. It's a choice. Because I know sometimes we're not really checking our emails like we say we do. And so I'll send a text reminder. 
you know, that's it. We're not gonna be talking on the phone like best friends. Hey, how you? I don't. I wouldn't have time for that. You know, um, business to run. We need people to talk to. We need people. To, we need people to see, respond to. So, thank you so much for your support in advance. And like I said, hit that like button at least. The goal for this video, once again, is twenty likes, three comments. 20 likes, three comments. Easy to do, easy to do, easy to do, people. Have a great rest of your day and stay tuned for another episode of the Queen's Self Podcast. At the end will be my music video from 2019 and also the whole playlist for all of the faux podcast episodes so far of the Queen's Tales podcast. Have a great rest of your whatever time it is in your neck of the woods. Bye-bye.